All right, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we need to talk about the tropics once again because we do have two tropical cyclones left over from the ones we talked about a while back. One of those has a pretty high risk of developing and it's on a course to pretty much head towards the United States. Anyway, before I get into things, be sure to smash the like button and leave a comment down below because those two things help me out so much and also be sure to subscribe for more weather related content. For today's comment of the day, I want to know, do you think that either of these systems will become a tropical storm at least? Let me know in the comments down below and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Let's get straight into this video and first things first, we're taking a look at that two day graphical tropical weather outlook here. We're taking a look at both of these systems here. As you can see, within the next two days, we have a 50% chance of development there within the first uh, more upfront system there, uh, very close to the Eastern Caribbean. And it's basically heading in a very, uh, I would say it's heading towards the west, kind of towards the northwest there. It might interact a lot there with the Caribbean uh, on its course towards either the Gulf or the East Coast or maybe even directly towards Florida. It's hard to say exactly where this one is headed uh, and what intensity it would be. We also have that tropical cyclone number two there, which is a 20% uh, chance, I almost said 2%, 20% chance of development there uh, within the next two days. Now taking a zoomed in look here, we can see the satellite imagery on both of these. First things first, our 20% chance one is not looking too healthy right now, that's why it's a 20%, but this 50% chance uh, tropical disturbance does look a lot better. 50% is pretty significant there for the next two days. And honestly, the, the setup here with these clouds is looking like a developing storm. Now, taking a look at the five-day outlook here from the National Hurricane Center, you can see that we have one yellow region there and then one orange, which indicates 40 to 60% chance, and then in the yellow, 40% chance or below. You can see they are very close to each other. It looks like the yellow one is likely going to go south of where the orange one goes, so that is also decreasing the likelihood of that yellow one developing because that orange one is heading towards much more favorable conditions, uh, and then that yellow one is heading towards a hurricane graveyard, as I would call it, uh, where a lot of storms just end up going in there and basically falling apart uh, because of the very unfavorable conditions. Here's the percentages on screen. We have a 30% chance here with this second disturbance, and then we have a 60% chance here with this first disturbance here, as you can see. So a 60% chance over the next five days, 50% chance over the next two days, this one is looking good heading into the next few days with development, favorability, things of that nature. It is out ahead of that dust that is now entering into the Atlantic. So as long as it's moving fast enough, it should beat out a lot of that dust and be able to freely develop into uh, pretty much anything it can become. Uh, so we will watch very closely for that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move on, take a look at some satellite imagery, some spaghetti model guidance, and some intensity guidance as well uh, for all of these two storms. Now here we are taking a look at the intensity guidance here on that weaker storm, and as you can see it is just really, really looking weak. We see some green, some yellows indicating some moderately tall clouds, I guess, but they are very, very small areas. Uh, and it just is not heading in the right direction. I think this one is going to break up. I do not see that one becoming uh, really much of anything looking ahead towards the future. Now, this this one right here, the front one, uh, Tropical Disturbance Number 1, I really, really do feel like this one will develop. I mean, look at this one. It has extremely tall clouds, and it is heading in the right direction. Over the past 12 hours, we've seen a lot of development from this one, and it has become more and more organized. And I really, for that reason, just feel like this one will end up developing. Uh, it really is looking good. You can see it's a very big cluster of clouds with no pockets in between, with no clouds. It is all together and very organized there. Now we're going to move on and really just start talking about some intensity guidance. Here's MVEST 92L and this was as of yesterday at 12Z. So this was the last time they basically made an update for this one. Pretty much broken up. Here's 93L, which is that weaker of the two that we just took a look at on satellite imagery. It has about a 30% chance of development over the next five days. And even this GEFS model guidance has this one not developing at all because these lines go about, I don't know, um, maybe like 50 or 100 miles and then just stop. Uh, it basically breaks apart. But here is Invest 94L or Tropical Disturbance Number 1. 
for reference. And as you can see, this one, they keep it really, really together and it either heads towards Florida, the Gulf, or the East Coast. This GEFS model really wants to take it towards the Gulf and not really the East Coast, but we will take a look in a moment at a model that does want to take it towards the coast. Now, the one thing that is going to hold this storm back a lot is that it's likely going to interact with Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic, Haiti, and Cuba, uh, which is basically a worst case scenario for a storm like this. Very, very tall mountains, especially there in Dominican Republic and Haiti. Uh, even Puerto Rico has some taller mountains as well. And it really just, that land interaction is going to eat it apart. And if it was to head through those regions and then eventually hit Florida, I would expect it to be a much weaker storm by the time it did so, which would be good news pretty much for everybody involved because at this point it wouldn't be too strong of a storm yet as it's heading Dominican Republic, Haiti, Cuba either. So they wouldn't see any major impacts, I don't think. Uh, and neither would Florida in that case scenario. But if it does move through those uh, islands and then eventually into the Gulf of Mexico, then it could freely develop, especially if it's slowed down or maybe heads up the East Coast, then freely develop and slow down. It's really, really hard to say. Now, the interaction with those islands is really the the deciding factor there, and we're going to need to wait and see if that happens. Because if it really doesn't interact with those islands as much, we could see some uh, really big development early on. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on and take a look at the Canadian model spaghetti model guidance, and then all of the models combined, and then the two intensity guidance uh, pages as well, and take a look at what they're calling for on this storm. All right, now here is our CMC model for this one. And as you can see, a lot of these have it heading up the East Coast as well. So this is just a little bit of a differing opinion. A few of them have it hitting Florida, and then a few have it going into the Gulf of Mexico. This one usually is very far spread out and doesn't have a lot of good agreement. And that definitely is the case here. Here is some spaghetti model guidance for the second invest, the one with 30% chance of development here. And you can see there is a few models that like to take this somewhere. Uh, but really, it's very unorganized, and it's hard to say what intensity it would be. Now, as we take a look at that much higher chance invest, the 60% chance one, here is all the models. And as you can see, there is a couple that do take it north of Dominican Republic, north of Cuba, north of Haiti, and that would be a much stronger storm likely heading towards the Florida Keys, according to those ones. Now, a great majority have this one heading directly over Dominican Republic, directly over Haiti, and then directly over Cuba, which would keep it weaker for the time being. But many of those, if not all of them, have it heading into the Gulf afterwards, where it could get its act together at that point. Notice none of these have it heading towards the East Coast, but that is a possibility still at this point. Now for the intensity guidance here, here is Invest 93L, which is the weaker of the two, like I said. There is a few models that just take this one straight for hurricane status. I don't think I'm buying into that. Usually there's a group of models that do something weird like this, uh, and it's never really a very likely case scenario. Uh, we do have many models suppressing this one below tropical storm status and keeping it that way, and I'm much more on the side of those models at this point. Those ones keeping it really, really low and basically breaking up within the next 60 hours. Now here's a very interesting uh, one. This is our Invest 94L, the 60% chance uh, area. And as you can see, many of these models keep it hovering right, right along that border of tropical storm status or tropical depression status. I can, guarantee, I can guarantee you almost all of these have it hitting at least tropical depression status, but they have it hovering right around that tropical storm, tropical depression line and not really ever uh, going up too much here. You can see there's one that takes it towards category one very early on, and then there's one, or I guess slowly, it hits around the same time, but then there's one that very abruptly intensifies and then weakens, so there's a lot going on. I feel like we're going to need to see some updates in the next few days. I think this one has a better chance of developing than that would kind of let on, but we will have to wait and see. For today's confidence tab, we remain at about a 50 to 60% chance at a four out of six. Uh, that's just where I'm at right now. For today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, would you prefer to stay in this summer pattern or would you like to go straight into fall pattern? And Anna Bolster answered it perfectly here. Need a colder pattern ASAP. 
I feel the desperation there. I really do feel like a lot of people feel that way as well. They're ready for the fall time. Usually around August, I start feeling that way as well. You know, I'm ready for September. Well, that's really just a continuation of summer as it is, but mostly, you know, that late September, early October pattern to really set in. I get some 60s as highs. I'm, I'm looking forward to it, guys. I'm so excited, and it is right around the corner. For today's patron, highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons, John Ben Benick, James Wade, Dovey Nagel, Lear the Pan, and Donna Carnes, alongside our diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Cotalesa, Catfight, Charles Stinnett, Cindy Klein, Mark J, Luke Falego, Gary, John Khaleesi, Dwight Phelan, and Stephen Crenenthal. If you would like to be part of this exciting patron history of the day, do so by joining our very awesome Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below. I would also like to thank our channel members, Hair Firms 1 and Catbite as well. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to destroy the like button and leave a comment down below because again, those two things help me out so much. And also be sure to subscribe if you like weather-related content. I will see you guys in the next video.